All right, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Caroline Charles, Community Relations Coordinator with the Planning Commission. Thank you so much for attending the Property Rights Virtual Public Meeting today. In just a minute, we'll, we'll start the presentation to go over the proposed language of the property rights element for inclusion in the unincorporated Hillsborough County Comprehensive Plan. And we're looking forward to hearing your feedback and answering your questions. So immediately following the presentation, we'll have time for a Q&A. And there's a couple different ways you can submit questions to us. You can either type directly into the chat box, or you can also click on the raise hand button to be recognized, and we'll unmute you so you can speak. Um, finally, I would like to mention that this presentation is being recorded, and we will, it will be uploaded to the Property Rights Project page in just a few days. And now I would like to introduce our presenter, Mark Hudson, who is an executive planner with the Planning Commission. Uh, thank you, Caroline. I appreciate it. And welcome everyone to our virtual meeting on the Hillsborough County property rights element. I do have a, a short PowerPoint, which I would like to go through to kind of bring everyone up to the same point of, of the work that we've been doing on behalf of the Hillsborough County and the Board of County Commissioners uh, to explain to you some of the uh, reasons behind uh, developing this element and uh, some of the issues that have been raised. Uh, the Board of County Commissioners at a recent workshop asked us to do additional public outreach, and this is part of that public outreach process. Lionel, if I could have the next slide. Thank you, Lionel. The reason for the uh, requirement of the uh, uh, property rights element uh, initiated with the uh, adoption of House Bill 59 this last legislative session uh, it was signed by Governor DeSantis and it became effective July 1st. And a part of that uh, provision, of course, was to ensure that in the local decision making uh, processes of all the jurisdictions in the state of Florida, that these the, pri the property rights um, the property rights were were acknowledged and and and, and um, brought into the process of making local decisions. Uh, one of the stipulations was that that this had to become an element in each jurisdiction's comprehensive plan, and any jurisdiction who failed to do so uh, risked having other plan amendments, either public or private, that had been initiated after July 1st uh, for their progress to be held up until such time as the jurisdiction took action. Uh, we're bringing this back ultimately to the Board of County Commissioners for their consideration on March 10th, and I'll, I'll note that a little bit later in the presentation. The legislation had some specific language in it that was to be included in, in, in the uh, property rights element. Uh, however, when we went to the workshop with the uh, uh, Board of County Commissioners, they want to include some additional information, uh, some additional provisions uh, that they felt was important. And they had uh, received copies of a mile element done by the Thousand Friends of Florida and instructed us to use that as a base. Now. Planning Commission staff, with the assistance of county staff, went through that and tailored that model element to meet the needs of Hillsborough County. And that is the uh, element that I'm going to describe to you uh, in this presentation. If I could have the next slide. So the element, uh, rather slim uh, as elements go, it's only a few pages, uh, and it's basically broken up into three objective clusters. Uh, the first objective cluster deals with primarily with addressing the issues that were in directly in the legislation past, past this last session. Uh, it identifies the specific property rights that will be respected by Hillsborough County through its decision-making processes. Uh, if this section was adopted just by itself, it would meet that requirements in the legislation uh, that uh, was um, recently enacted. And if I could have the next slide. And this shows you the language that comes out of uh, that legislation uh, verbatim. Uh, we've had uh, the uh, county attorney review this, but we've also had all the municipal attorneys take a look at this. Uh, we feel that the impacts for this being made part of the uh, Hillsborough County uh, Conference of Plan in this case will be limited. Uh, Hillsborough County has been very respectful of private property rights historically. Uh, and also many of these issues that are you see addressed in language before you have already been addressed in other ways such as case law, Bert Harris, things of that nature. So we don't see the, in, the inclusion of this to, 
have any dramatic effect on how the county operates, but it does keep these issues in the forefront of the uh, planners, the engineers, the elected officials as they go through and make the decisions they do on a day-to-day -day basis um, on behalf of the public. If I could have the next slide. There are two additional sections or objective clusters, and these relate back to the um, Thousand Friends of Florida uh, model element that was used. And of course, we tailor that to Hillsborough County. And the sec second section dealt with how uh, people uh, can participate in the decisions that affect their lives and property in Hillsborough County, particularly those that are adjacent to or in the close proximity to, for example, a map amendment and how they might be able to have input into that process. Now, I will say that for the most part, these processes have already been addressed to a great extent uh, in either the Plan Amendment Procedures Manual, which is a document that guides planning commission staff and county staff on when a plan amendment is initiated either publicly or privately. And of course, relating to zonings, it would be, uh, relates back to the processes that are in the Land Development Code. However, this does codify them into uh, the comprehensive plan and therefore strengthens them as far as their, their implementation. If I could have the next slide. Now I wanna make clear and through some of the language that we have modified based on the original Thousand Friends of Florida template, um, we limited its impact to plan amendments and zonings. The uh, Board of County Commissioners and other boards make far less um, significant decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, such as variances or right-of-way vacates or something of that nature. And we felt that those were too local and of not a significant enough uh, measure to actually uh, address it within this um, actual element. Uh, so we've limited to just plan amendments and zonings. Uh, there was some language in, in the original model element that spoke of affected persons, which has, which is a defined um, uh, group, uh, you know, as far as being able to speak and participate in, in these uh, proceedings. And of course, historically, we've allowed anyone who wishes to participate to, uh, to attend our public hearings to speak for their uh, limited uh, amount of time, which is usually about three minutes. Um, so we didn't want to use the affected person, so we used the word interested parties. Now, I will say that, I'm doing a lot of outreach to different groups and this particular term interested party has been questioned and some have suggested maybe it should just be general public or public uh, and we're taking that into consideration but the but the bottom line was here is that we just wanted to ensure that anyone who wanted to participate could participate and not to discriminate or exclude anyone. Uh, also there's language in there concerning uh, speaking times, and those would be set by at the discretion of the uh, board that was hearing the public input, uh, ultimately the Board of County Commissioners. So they, based on the interest and the room size and the amount of speakers, they would have control as far as how much time was allotted to uh, the staff, to the applicant, to the interested uh, parties of the general public when they appear before the uh, board to you know, give their input. If I can have the next slide. Uh, we have established a link uh, between the comprehensive plan uh, and the either the plan amendment procedures manual or the land development code that describes uh, what notice requirements are required for, for hearings. Uh, in the case of plan amendments for the county, there you know signage is required, um, notice to everyone with the 250 feet uh, is required to be, be sent to them in the, in the mail. So those that link has been now established between the conference of plan and, and those other documents. Um, we do note in this element some of the other ways that we do get the word out to let the public know that there uh, is a change afoot and that they may want to have input into it. Um, you know, I already mentioned the signage, but of course, we're required to put legal advertisements in the uh, Tampa Times. Uh, we place things on websites, things of that interest. So, so there are some other mechanisms to get the word out. The uh, model element talked a little bit about a pre-application meeting and, and then how that would be uh, um, how that would be addressed and, 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 and how that would be conducted. We didn't think that was a very constructive process uh, for uh, garnering uh, 
cooperation amongst a, a property owner and his neighbors or getting information out uh, to, the, to the general public. And we substituted in the requirement for a neighborhood meeting. Uh, there's not a lot of um, detail in that right now in the current element, but it would be very similar to uh, the uh, neighborhood meeting requirements for a zoning, uh, typically within the 250 feet and, you know, making them aware that the meetings in the evening and things of that nature. Uh, we would have to flush out those details in the plan amendment procedures manual of when one is required and, and how it would be conducted. But we did feel that a neighborhood meeting would be more constructive and allow the neighborhood to, to uh, discuss issues and, and, and ways to address issues uh, within that um, form. If I could have the next slide. The last section is how um, the jurisdiction actually makes its decisions uh, and uh, it relates to how the vote is to be conducted and, and how those actions are to be, be taken. And if I could have the next slide. And this explains that for a plan amendment, uh, it would be a majority plus one. Uh, and for rezoning, it would be four affirmative votes uh, in either to approve or deny. Uh, I will say, that is my understanding that this is slightly different than what occurs today, uh, particularly as it relates to text amendments in the county. Uh, there are some text amendments that currently only require a simple majority, and this potentially would require them to have uh, a majority plus one. And there are some, well, I have seen received some uh, commentary um, prior to this meeting where there's been some concern expressed about that, and that is under review. Uh, with our staff. Uh, as I mentioned, we're doing quite a, several other outreach meetings in, in beyond this one. And once we've completed that process, we will um, confer amongst ourselves and, and, and formulate a recommendation and, and, and present that to the Board of Commi uh, County Commissioners on the 10th of March. Uh, and finally, there's just a provision in there that uh, we will ensure that there is su sufficient time for the public to review all materials prior to the hearing. Uh, we don't want to get into situations where either the proponents or opponents are introducing materials at the last moment and doesn't give uh, the opportunity for the, uh, the other side to review those and rebut those or comment on those uh, in, in an efficient manner. So there are provisions in there that the materials have to be in by such and such a time. Uh, Otherwise, the meeting would be continued to a future date to allow such time as uh, the for everyone to digest the materials that have been submitted. And if I could have the next slide. That is basically the conclusion of my uh, presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, we are we've been instructed by the Board of County Commissioners to seek out uh, to, to seek public input and have these outreach meetings. Uh, particularly since their last hearing, there was a few individuals who expressed some concern or had some questions, and uh, we're con conducting that outreach through events such as this, uh, and we plan to, you know, summarize those comments uh, and bring those back to the uh, Board of County Commissioners on March 10th of this year. And that concludes my presentation, and Caroline, I think we might be able to open it up for, um, for questions. Uh, or, or, uh, or comments, uh, and we'll, we'll document those comments and be sure they become part of the record. So if anybody has any questions or comments in general that they would like to make, um, again, please feel free to type in the chat box or you can click on the raise hand button um, and we will unmute you so you can speak. I see no hands raised and no comments or questions in the chat. So Mark, I actually have a question. Maybe we can get this yeah. started. Um, might um, help someone else think of another question. Um, but if you were someone that wanted to comment about this, um, what would the deadline be for that? Uh, of course, the, the sooner the better as far as us being able to pack this for the consumption of the Board of County Commissioners. But we would like to get all the comments in uh, by the end of February. 
So if you get it in to us by the last day of February, that should give us adequate time to uh, digest it, uh, format it, and, and produce it and get it uh, to the Board of County Commissioners for the consideration. Thank you for that question. Of course. And Lionel, I think we do have a raised hand. Travis. Yes, Tra Travis Council, you, you can unmute yourself and speak at this time. Good afternoon, Mr. Hudson and staff. I appreciate y'all hearing me this afternoon and I, I just have some quick comments and a number of the things you you addressed with, with some changes y'all are making. Um, I last uh, came before the Planning Commission when this, this uh, came before them um, back, uh, what, uh, quite a while ago. Um, and I'm glad to see um, that uh, the the BOCC is letting y'all take another crack at it. Um, I, uh, I'm a, I'm a landowner, a farmer, a lifelong resident, and uh, uh, board member of Hillsborough County Farm Bureau. Um, so I, my concerns are that we're, we are uh, putting more burdens on landowners than we are protecting landowners, and, and I think the, the ordinance was was trying to. To give some protection to landowners, and that's that's my concern. Um, I'm glad to hear that you're considering uh, not requiring a supermajority in Policy 3.1. I feel that's burdensome and overreaching uh, for a zoning or a comp plan amendment. A simple majority is is much more equitable. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, I um, I take issue with Policy 2.2 in regards to interested parties. Who are the interested parties? Um, I would much rather see this uh, be changed to public, which which I, sounds like you're considering as well. Just keep it simple. Um, the third item is in regards to neighborhood meetings, policy 2.4. I understand on larger projects, we need community input. What We have so many layers upon layers that a landowner must jump through. For smaller projects, the appointed professionals, elected officials, and professional planners seem to be much more, or seem to be enough to me uh, for a project. For, for larger projects, we need to know, have more definition, which it sounds like you're working on um, in exactly where, when, um, how these meetings are gonna take place. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, my last item is, uh, I just have a question in regards to other municipalities. How many other municipalities have adopted um, similar elements or are considering similar elements. Um, I'm just concerned about putting a burden on on these landowners, like I said, and I sure appreciate your time today and please let me know how I can help. Um, I appreciate your comments. Um, I'll start with the last question first concerning how many other jurisdictions have uh, utilized the Thousand Friends of Florida as a base. Um, at the time I presented this to the um, uh, Board of County Commissioners uh, a month or so ago, uh, it was three. Uh, now that number may have increased significantly since then, and I will pose the question to um, uh, the Department of Economic Opportunity tomorrow to see if I can get an updated number on that. Uh, but as of when I spoke to them last, it was it was only three. But that was relatively early in the process, and they may have seen more submitted since then. Uh, but I will have that information. Uh, and if you want to leave your 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 uh, number with Caroline or in the chat box, I can call you back and, and respond uh, with it with an exact number from them. Uh, the rest of your items were comments, uh, which I really appreciate. I, I do have one follow-up question concern. It, it, it sounded like you considered that neighborhood meetings would be more of appropriate and less of a burden for only larger projects. And I was curious from your perspective, what would you consider a larger project that by certain acreage or a certain number of homes or square feet of a non-residential uh, use? Do you have any thoughts about that uh, or hadn't, hadn't considered that to that detail yet? You know, in my mind, say a, a 40 acre project um, or, or uh, um, you know, even something as maybe as large as, as an 80 acre project. Um, but but uh, I'll leave that to you guys to to decide. It just seems for, for 
those of us that that don't have the capability to hire, you know, um, uh, planning professionals, it, it it gets tough. So yeah, I will say the state recognizes the state has a, a definition of uh, 50 acres or less is called a small scale, and of course more than that is called a regular plan amendment. So that's how the state envisions it. Of course, obviously a, a small project could have a significant impact if it was located in a you know sensitive area but that is another means of trying to to uh, to measure that but i have written that down and and that comment you made is not unique i've heard that a couple times now concerning uh the neighborhood meeting should have some type of uh, threshold um and um or some type of mechanism that uh it wouldn't necessarily be required under all circumstances but only when it was felt uh, to be needed. Did you have any, did anyone else, else have anything else? Yes, um, there was one other question from Jennifer Motzinger. Um, she's asking, when will staff release the version that has considered the feedback given? Uh, I think I would um, maybe uh, put a unique on the spot for that. Uh, typically, uh, when we go to the March 10th meeting, when does our um, updated report be uh, become finalized? Is it a week in, in advance? We normally, yes, Mark, release it um, a week in advance. However, um, the board has requested of us to um, get the packet out to them earlier than that this time. Um, so right now, um, we're scheduled to do so at the uh, latest, the end of uh, February, Mark. Okay, so, so I would check back with us. We're going March 10th, but I would start uh, reaching out to me. If you don't see it on our webpage, I would reach out to me uh, specifically uh, near the end of February, and I can let you know the status. And I do have another meeting in case anyone wants to get the word out. This will be an in-person presentation, and I don't know the exact title of the group. Someone else might be able to help me, but it's uh, it's an agricultural committee through Hillsborough County. Uh, Simon Bolin um, is staff to that, and uh, I will be presenting uh, to them on uh, Tuesday. Mark, that's the AEDC. Okay, and that stands for? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Agricultural Economic Development Council, I'm pretty that sure. Sounds, Let me look that up really quick. Is that, that right? Sounds, okay. That sounds pretty close. <laughs> yeah. yeah I just, everyone always says AEDC. <laughs> so I will be there. I will also have um, hard copies of the current report uh, at that meeting if anyone would want, want one. And then Mark, who should um, anyone on this call, if they have further questions or want to contact someone, would you be the right person for that? I am the right person and um, I still haven't got my new phone number memorized. <laughs> so let me say that my direct number is 813-582-7338. Uh, That's 582-7338. And my email address is uh, hudsonm at plancom.org. So that's Hudson. Uh, the letter M at plancom, P-L-A-N-C-O-M dot org. And we have one more raised hand. Um, Michael Peterson would like to speak. Good afternoon, all. Mike Peterson here. A um, couple of items. Number one, on the issue others have already spoken to, the difference between an affected person and an interested person. I am concerned that I'm not worried about people necessarily participating except it's almost like we're granting a new standing um, level. Whereas historically standing for lawsuits and, and other such things, you'd have to prove you are an affected person, not just merely interested. And the reason that's a difference here is recall this whole idea of a property rights element was designed to, if not enhance, at least remind everybody that the property owner applicant is supposed to have some special standing, that unless they were doing something against the public health and welfare, particularly if what they're doing seems consistent 
with the comprehensive plan, you know, and zoning codes or whatever, that they should be allowed to do such. And then if someone was adversely affected, then then they had standing to talk about it. But now just to let anyone who's interested get in the middle and almost have now the equal standing of what an affected person was in essence equal to the property rights owner, this certainly seems to be in contravention of the intent of the state legislation. So, so I think we're heading in the wrong direction with this one. The second item I want to speak to is you've made a note that you're worried about people coming into the hearings and catching everybody off guard with new information that the applicant would not necessarily be able to anticipate, review in advance or whatever. Let me give you a recent example to get where I want to go that is a similar problem. Both the RP2 and the DUBR2 changes, which are recent comp plan amendments, you had elements that had already been approved here locally, went to the state for review, came back as everyone had seen them and everyone thought that they should then be ready to speak to those elements as they were initially approved and left for state approval. And then you opened up the hearing, and so all the public, if you will, or actual were allowed to speak their piece, thinking that it was all about the element as they had seen it. The public hearing component is closed down, and then you have some commissioners, in particular, who had a laundry list of things they'd like to see their way and proceeded to pursue those. And in both cases, you had significant changes to the elements for RP2 and WVR2 made on the fly after the public had no more opportunity to speak to them. And even worse, we found out that that was because they'd been in conversations with the planning commission staff in the meantime, so everyone knew they were going to pop up these, but no one was informed before the process. And so here you are as a property, not able to speak to a commissioner, changing significantly the language and the terms as had been presented, frankly, months before, before it went to the state, and suddenly they slammed them through. And there's nothing you can do about it, or at least you couldn't speak to it. So if you're if you're concerned about the public speaking and doing that sort of thing, I hope you're equally about commissioners doing that. If if they're going to start making significant changes, they shouldn't be hiding in the bushes, popping out with such a thing, and suddenly getting the votes, and it happened when no one could see it coming, no one could speak to it. I believe that's the kind of thing that prompted the state legislature to require such a property rights element. And I believe perhaps we ought to speak to that in this element so that not just participants, but the actual commissioners themselves, if they're going to make significant changes, then everyone ought to know it in advance and be able to speak to it in advance. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those comments. You're breaking up uh, a little bit during that, but I, you did sum up at the end, and I, I do think I, I garnered your, your thoughts on that second issue. Um, I was, of course, involved with that particular item, and I don't know if any of our other staff wants to weigh in, but before that, I just uh, have a little dialogue with you concerning the first item, which is the term interested person. Uh, you are not unique in bringing that concern to us. Um, interested person is not defined, which was a comment that we received, uh, unlike affected person. And of course, it was not staff's intent to garner that group uh, additional entitlements or, 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 or um, standing than, uh, than, than, the, than the general public. Uh, the only thought there was is just to ensure that everyone who attends a public hearing or an event has that opportunity to you know, give input, which is occurring today. So in some of my past discussions, the thought was, you know, if that is in fact the case, don't introduce a new term that is not defined, 
but just say, you know, that the general public has the right to appear before the Board of County Commissioners or the Planning Commission, whatever the case may be, and have their allotted time to, to speak either for or against the, the proposition at hand. Um, so I do take uh, that that comment uh, with the others and, and will surely uh, advise uh, our staff and also ultimately the views to see at their next meeting on that particular issue. Uh, related to uh, the elected body making changes after public comment is closed, um, I'm not sure uh, how much we can address that, but we surely can make them aware of your concerns. Um, does anyone have any experience with um, that particular item the gentleman spoke of with that uh, plan amendment um, in the, I know we referred to it, but I haven't been involved with it. Um, I think it's dealing with some land use plan categories uh, in the county. Yes, Mark, um, for the record, Melissa Leinhard uh, with Planning Commission staff. The, um, I am familiar with that and I, I think you do make a good point. Um, I'm not sure if you're planning on attending um, the hearing for this on March 10th, but I think that is feedback that would be valuable for the board to hear directly. Um, and that's really, I mean, I, I don't really have anything else to add to that, um, except for, I think you make a good comment. Well, and let me say, believe me, they'd always like to hear from me directly, but I, 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 will, I will give that an attempt. But, but, I, but I wanted to say it here because that was the purpose of this meeting for you to gather information for others who weren't familiar to hear about such things and to consider whether you want to recommend such. And while they aren't going to like hearing someone suggesting they should be somehow guided or limited, the facts are it's exactly the kind of thing that prompted this very element mandate from the state. And what they did is a perfect example of the problems that the property owners are facing and while they feel put upon, and it's hard to justify why they should be able to do such things when the property owner can have no notice it's coming and suddenly just get washed over. So anyway, you get the idea and uh, I understand it's a delicate situation for you, sorry. Well, I, I can assure you that, uh, you know, I've written that comment down and it'll become part of the summary and we will uh, bring that up to them uh, for their consideration. Caroline, um, it, there... looks, yeah, it looks like Travis um, wants to make a few more comments as well. Okay. No, no other comments. I, I totally agree with, with, uh, as much better stated by uh, Mike Peterson, those comments. And um, I've witnessed as well, this same behavior um, at the BOCC and it's very aggra aggravating, um, you know, to, to me as a landowner. That's my only comment. Travis, I wanna write your name down. What's your last name? Um, I have his um, email and oh, phone good. number he put in the chat, so I, I took a note of that and I'll send it to you, Mark. I appreciate it. I just want to be sure I have uh, the ability to contact him if need be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it. Um, okay, so I'm not seeing any other hands raised or questions in the chat. Seconds, just to make sure. Well, just uh, while, while Caroline's looking at that, if if you become aware of anyone else who, sh who has an interest in this topic um, and uh, wants to you know, have some dialogue with staff on that, uh, we, we have a couple more outreach events uh, available, but not many. But that doesn't preclude them from, again, uh, contacting me, uh, utilizing the telephone number, the email address that I've, I've already supplied. Uh, and um, I'd be happy to, uh, you know, talk to all the individuals on a one-to-one -one basis to go through these issues as we develop our summary uh, and uh, recommendation uh, for any potential edits to the um, uh, plan amendment uh, prior to March 10th. Great. Um, I think those are all of our questions and comments that I'm seeing. Well, on behalf of myself, I'd like to thank everyone from for coming out and, and helping and uh, assisting and 
all this input is very valuable. And uh, the interesting thing is we're hearing several comments uh, multiple times, which uh, tends to see that, that the concerns are kind of gelling uh, into uh, two or three major issues that we surely need to make the BOCC aware of. Thank you all so much for attending. Have a good evening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.